So basically in this movie, you guys openly share the same woman, which is a direct violation of the guy code. Was, yeah. that, was that weird well, or liberating? There. Let's stop you there. <laughs> a little bit more complicated than that. <laughs> more complicated. You obviously weren't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, technically, Go on. we are in love with two, well, he's in love with a woman. I'm in love with an alien. Yes. And yes, they share the same physical body. No, I think we should linger on the fact that you're in love with an alien. All right, I'm in love with an alien. It's a little silvery... Interspecies love. Fiber optic, tentacled, beautiful well, thing. Well, on that note, you know, I've read that men are more visually oriented. Was it weird, uh, you know, imagining falling in love just with someone's, like, soul mm -hmm. and not at all becoming attached to their physical appearance? Well, it doesn't hurt when <laughs> it, she looks like Saoirse Ronan, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> Um, and, and her character of Wanda is a, a, an incredibly sweet, even though she's not human technically, yeah. she has more human qualities than the, our characters show in this cave. I mean, she's very sensitive, she's very honest, uh, she's very kind. And uh, uh, so I think that's why Ian starts to fall mm -hmm. in love with her is because there's a sense, there's a sense of softness to her and, and a group of people that have been really hardened by uh, a struggle to survive. Well, you know, it's a little unfair because we get to see you guys fall in love, but your relationship is mostly developed off camera. So yeah. how did you and Sersha kind of make sure that connection still came across to the audience? Well, we, well, we had a few flashbacks, um, mm -hmm. which we did early on in the shoot. But, you know, from Jared's point of view and from my point of view as an actor, it's not, I'm not playing any romance. There's no romance to be, to be played. It's, it's, it's terrible what's happened to, to, to lose the person you love and then to... To have that person come back in its in her physical form, you know, a daily reminder uh, to Jared as for, for what he's lost, but then to discover that in fact the girl you you loved is trapped inside, you know, it's a terrible thing to deal with. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think we had to focus on that as a problem more than the romance you see. And also, last question: I take it you've both read The Host now. Yes. Right? yes. How would you describe to your fellow men the experience of reading a Stephanie Meyer novel? Well, it's certainly different than her previous work. Uh, <laughs> it's it's. The demographic is much more broad. Yes, there's still those elements of, of romance, but those are completely necessary for mm -hmm. any story. Mm -hmm. But the heart of it is a sci-fi book and a film, uh, which I think is probably most surprising to men when they go see the movie, as the preconceived notions of they think they know what it's going to be, and then they realize, oh my God, I just watched an Andrew Nichol film. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Stephanie herself says she wrote this as an antidote to Twilight. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, she wrote it to, to pull away to, for a change of direction. And, you know, it's got a whole bunch of philosophical ideas, uh, you know, science fiction ideas, which Stephanie admits is her favorite genre. So this, I think, was her escape. So, yeah, I think it's at heart, it's the story of human survival. <laughs>